Hello! Today is part one of a series of videos in which I'm going to attempt to convert a game that I've written into Amos. Back in 2017, I wanted to learn how to write games for the iPhone and learn Objective-C. I came up with a game where you have to help Santa deliver presents without crashing into any of the houses or chimneys. The game was designed to be retro-ish and used Amiga mod files to play for all the music. I released the game onto the Apple App Store just to see what would happen. It didn't do very well, but then I wasn't bothered. It was more of a learning exercise. Later, I recoded the game in HTML5 to see if that was possible. So I had a thought. I wonder if I could convert this game to work on the Amiga. Choosing between two of the languages that I used to use, Amos and High Speed Pascal, I've chosen Amos for this task. And I'm going to go through the process of creating this game with you. Most of the professional games that you would have seen on the Amiga back in the day were usually created in assembly language in tools such as DevPack. Later, Blitz Basic became a rather popular alternative. However, it was Amos where a lot of beginners started out, and back when I first got my Amiga, it's where I started too. Amos was released in 1990 and was a descendant of Stoss Basic for the Atari ST. Amos made the process of creating games easier by providing commands to manage the Amiga's hardware with ease. Later versions included Amos Professional, a compiler, and Amos 3D extensions. Recently, Amos has been open sourced and received a lot of updates including AGA support, but we'll be using the original version. So let's start by taking a look at the game. We can see parallax scrolling, a foreground and background layer. We can see Santa and his sleigh, and we can see presents dropping. We need to take each one of these elements and work out what's the best way to produce that on the Amiga's hardware. And in this video, we're gonna start with the background layer. I'll provide links to all of the files in every single step so you can try this yourself. The first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of gradient fades on all of the graphics. These are gonna to have to be removed and done a different way. The Amiga has a limit on the number of colours you can have on screen at any one moment. So the first thing we need to do is take the background graphic and convert it to something more usable. All of the graphics in the game are stored in a single sprite sheet. And if we take a look at the background, we can see that it's one very wide image. We'll use some tricks of the Amiga's hardware to produce the gradient fade. So we just need to convert the background image like this. Exporting IFF graphics to the Amiga is actually quite straightforward. There's a plugin available for GIMP, written by the same guy that produces Amiberry. So we'll first try scrolling the background using the same technique as the web game. This just repeatedly draws the background image at different positions on screen giving the effect of scrolling. I talked about we were going to use some Amiga hardware tricks to make the background look more interesting. One thing you can do is control the Amiga based on exactly what part of the screen is being drawn at that moment. Amos hides most of this away from you. One of the things you can do is to change the RGB values for a particular colour for each line on the screen. Let's try that in Amos and see how well it works. Wow, 19 frames a second. That's not really a AAA rated game. So one of the things we need to avoid is drawing too much to the screen every frame. You can see in the code, we're doing a massive copy to the screen every frame. Another approach to rendering this is using tiles. The idea being that you redraw a small area of the screen just before it appears. This is a lot quicker to do. We need to have parallax scrolling, which means we've got two layers drawing on top of each other. If we were to proceed down this route, we'd have to redraw the entire screen every time. Luckily for us, there's other techniques we can use. The Amiga features hardware scrolling, and it also features a mode called Dual Playfield. Dual Playfield allows you to overlay two images at the same time, with the background colour of the foreground one being transparent. It does, however, come with its own set of limitations, the main one being that each of those images cannot contain any more than eight different colours. This doesn't matter for the background layer, because we're using our clever hardware tricks to produce more colours. But it means we need to be a bit more reserved with our colours when we come to the foreground layer. So let's have a look at that in Amos. This time we have to start by opening two screens. The second one is opened a lot larger so we can scroll it. Once the content's set up, we can put it into dual playfield mode. In the main loop now, all we have to do is tell Amos to change the offset where the screen is. Let's run that and see how much faster it is. 
and now we can see one of the bugs in Amos. But at least we have the frame rate. So how do we fix this? Well it turns out that if both the screens are offset by an odd number, the problem goes away. It's also been fixed in the open source version of Amos. So let's apply that change and try again. That's better. You'll note that the text dual play field appearing over the top hasn't had to be redrawn and hopefully we can take advantage of that for the foreground layer. Well I hope you found that interesting. There's links in the description below for an ADF file containing the code that we've been using. In the next video we'll work out how to do the foreground layer. If you enjoyed the video consider giving me a like down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to make videos like this. See you in the next one.